Hello, hello everybody. This is Michele Paolino and Timo Sampelichiotis from Virtual Open Systems. Today, uh, we want to talk uh, and to update you about the Virtio Loopback, uh, the technology that we started developing in uh, uh, 2022 in AGL. So we are going to show you uh, the current status, uh, a bit of an idea of the next steps. Uh, you will see a demo and uh, in addition uh, we are uh, at the AGL booth uh, with a live demo and uh, uh, available to reply to any question you might have after this, uh, this discussion, this, uh, this presentation. So this is the idea of the agenda, I went uh, through it already. A few words about the approach for those who don't know uh, it yet. So loopback, uh, Virtio loopback, uh, is uh, an abstraction layer that gives you the possibility to run uh, and to use Virtio driver in non-virtualized device. So this is not a virtual machine. Uh, this is a, a system uh, like it can be your PC or uh, Raspberry Pi or uh, uh, an Arcar, uh, any type of uh, uh, platform that could be uh, automotive related or not. So uh, the idea is to create an abstraction layer that gives the possibility to use application using Virtio, also where in general Virtio is not available because uh, in theory, uh, Virtio is uh, something that is built for virtual machines uh, and can be used only inside uh, virtual machines. So with this uh, uh, technique, uh, what we are doing is to build a bridge between the Virtio driver and uh, other uh, uh, types of drivers. In this case, uh, uh, the main target is user space uh, uh, drivers, so vhost user uh, devices. You will see uh, more in the next, uh, uh, in the next picture. Uh, what are the, in the next slide, what are the benefits here? Um, the, the idea is yes, as I said, you run Virtio where in general this is not, re this is not available. Uh, you have some kind of transparent porting between, uh, uh, you have the same execution environment between a VM and, an, and a non-VM environment. You could use Virtio with containers. Uh, other benefits are that existing uh, uh, implementations are already uh, can be already used. We don't touch the drivers, uh, we don't touch the devices, uh, so this means that uh, everything that is already available can be easily uh, can be easily reused. Everything is open source. Uh, we uh, designed and developed it in the uh, during AGL. Uh, we are participating actively to the uh, software where they have a finite vehicle uh, expert group, and uh, uh, you can find us there every other uh, uh, Tuesday. Last but not least, uh, applications that are already using uh, Virtio uh, can be uh, simply reused as they are, because they don't need uh, uh, not even uh, to be recompiled. Um, components, so how we did that? The idea is that uh, uh, we have uh, the driver here, so the Virtio driver here, the reference one, could be RNG input, we support also I realize this is the right position. Uh, we support also uh, console, sound, uh, CAN, uh, and uh, um, these is the implementation of the device, okay? So this is the user space driver, the one that implements really the functionality. And the components that we built uh, to connect these two existing, already existing uh, solutions are a user space driver that is uh, uh, Virtio Transport and uh, an application that, uh, in this picture we go in more in detail, an application that uh, is able to uh, handle all the setting uh, and the negotiation uh, and the notification, uh, all the, let's say, control, uh, control plane part. It is important to mention that uh, we try to minimize as much as possible overhead uh, by implementing uh, 
shared memory between kernel and user space, and uh, also on uh, uh, the user space side, there are some tricks that we can use to make things uh, a bit faster. There is overhead, of course, because we are adding an abstraction layer, so an overhead is already expected. Uh, however, we, uh, we measured it. Uh, we have done in the past some uh, uh, presentations in this context, uh, and we measured it as, uh, I mean, it's something uh, uh, that didn't go up to, uh, uh, 10. Uh, yes. So we we judge it doable, manageable, let's say. Okay. What are these components a bit into? Let's go a bit more into the detail. So the transport. This is a, a virtio, let's say, defined the component. It's not something that we, uh, uh, let's say, invented. The transport is something that already exists. There are already transports, uh, MMIO-based, PCI-based. This is a different transport. Uh, so an, an implementation of an additional one uh, that doesn't give, uh, let's say, connectivity with uh, MMIO devices or PCI Express devices as the one that are commonly used. This one connects the Virtio, the Virtio uh, driver with uh, user space. How it does uh, with uh, how it does this uh, this thing? Of course, with some MMAP for the uh, memory sharing. Uh, Event FD is used for uh, the um, uh, notification, and then uh, there are, of course, it exposes. Uh, IOCTLs for the adapter that uh, looks more or less like this. The adapter is a, an application, a C application. It is implementing actually what CAMU implements, because at the end of the day, uh, this is the reference for us, also for us, in the sense that uh, we have user space devices. Uh, this implement, for instance, uh, uh, as I said, CAN, BLK, RNG, whatever uh, uh, device, uh, they expect to talk with Cameo because usually uh, the most, let's say, common uh, um, uh, use case here is a KVM virtual machine on the left, and on the right you have the uh, the VM user device. So our look, look back implements all the features that are needed to uh, negotiate the features and to um, uh, create a communication with the driver. The driver is unmodified. It expects a socket to connect to and uses EventFD for uh, the, the notification. The uh, transport, uh, you see the one that we discussed before, is the one that is connected then with the Virtio driver and uh, uh, exposes uh, IOCTL and event FD for, uh, the, uh, for the communication then with the kernel side. So this is a brief uh, introduction of the components. Uh, I am then uh, uh, at this point, we will go through ongoing activities and demo. I leave the stage to Timos uh, that will then give you more uh, uh, details. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Michele. So we are going to talk together about the ongoing activities. We have three main activities in, the, in the, this year. Activity we have three main parts. The first is to implement a multi-device support. The Virtio device prioritization and resource management, which is the most interesting one, and we will talk in detail in the, the next slides, and create an RFC for the Virtio mailing list to present the technology in the community. So the multi-device support, as you would expect, it's for the architecture to be able to support uh, multiple Virtio devices in parallel. This task is split in two parts. The first is to prepare the driver to handle multiple devices, which can be allocated dynamically without any hardware device to actually be there. And the second part is uh, which, uh, in the first part, we are going to be able, we were able, basically, to connect it with multiple adapter instances, and each adapter to be connected with uh, the corresponding VOS user device. Now, the second part is to prepare the adapter to handle multiple connections and to make, it, uh, uh, to make it work with the previous driver. That's a design overview. 
of what we implemented in this task. Now, this example shows one uh, sound device. It's uh, the A-Play application which is using the Virtaio sound device. Talks uh, via the ALSA framework um, kernel subsystem to the Virtaio sound. That goes to Virtaio loopback, dry transport driver, back to the adapter, and to the corresponding VOS user driver, which again, through pipe wire, goes through ALSA and the hardware speaker. Now, uh, similar to this, uh, we can see the CAN device works in the same way via the Virtaio loopback uh, architecture at the, in parallel with the sound device, a new Virtaio count, a Virtaio CAN the device is generated, which generates the v, uh, CAN zero device, which can be used with uh, CAN utils and whatever um, utilities to send and receive messages via the VOS user CAN device. Now, the current status of the activity. Um, it's being uh, finalized, basically, and the, all the, the new version of the driver and the adapter has been pushed to Garrett. Of course, all the corresponding changes to uh, the meta-AGL devil layer has been uh, updated accordingly. In total, we have five patches. The demo that uh, corresponds to the previous slides can be shown uh, up, uh, outside in the AGL uh, booth. Now, a few words about the priority and the idea behind it. The priorities and the resource management, it's uh, mainly uh, uh, it's mainly targeting to the adapter application, which having already the multi-device support is uh, targeting to create uh, initially a ratio between the device uh, his um, request that is going to serve. Let's say something like a ratio two to one, uh, having a Virtaio BLK device and a, a Virtaio CAN device. So for its two, um, for its two requests that receive for the BLK device, one is served for CAN, something like this. Later, we will see more about uh, more clever mechanisms to do this scheduling. A brief overview of what we talked about, which is similar to the multi-device uh, priority figure that we saw before, but now we just see here that we get the small ratios defined, uh, of course, dynamically. So, open points to be addressed during the development is uh, can we delay the control messages that they are sent from the VDIO device to the user to the VOS user user space drivers? To some cases, like uh, sound, no, we cannot. The, that leads to kernel panic messages, and we need to find a different way. A more general solution would be to see how we can stop, pause, and resume the VDIO drivers. This is the most interesting thing. So, aiming to tackle these um, these two issues, uh, open points. Uh, the application, we need to search some kind of Virtaio rules, we define it, which actually define specific rules of how to not lead the device to panic, the Virtaio driver to panic, or how, because Virtaio sound reacts different to delays, as we said, to Virtaio can. Um, the other point that I also mentioned already, it's uh, the idea of stopping and uh, starting the Virtaio devices without uh, causing uh, any panics. And the main and most difficult part of this task is the scheduling mechanism and logic that we are going to route and uh, schedule the notifications uh, between different devices or between instances of the same device. Now, uh, the current status of this task. We have started the investigation of the pause and resume mechanism. Um, uh, and we have, uh, and we plan to create an initial uh, an initial introduction of this idea and present to the community. We need first to identify if the delaying of uh, the control messages, as, we, as I talked before, it works like this to all the devices or creates problem to all the devices or only to Virtaio Sound, and then uh, give some more time to see how we can stop and start it, restart them again. Priority next steps. So. 
investigation document that we are going to share for the community. That's the first step. Then implementing an intermediate version with constant variables, uh, between, uh, constant uh, ratio between two devices or two instances of the devices, which has, uh, which has already implemented the pause and started mechanism. And then implement the and start working on the advanced uh, scheduling logic algorithm that is going to be part of the adapter. Of course, the last step is to put everything to push everything on Garrett. The last activity of this year is to create the RFC to the Vitaio mailing list and present the Vitaio Lubag driver. Uh, the initial discussion has been already initiated by the April 2023 when we shared the idea and the. Um, design documents to the community. We received some questions regarding the vid user, the comparison of vid user and the virtual loop pack um, technology. And this year we plan actually to share a patch uh, for the latest kernel to receive any message, to receive any comments, um, leads us to update the driver, open some uh, questions about the validity of the driver and things like this. I think that I just talked about them in the previous slide. I will leave them a bit, okay. So now other activities that took place that during that month uh, were to merge uh, the VS user console to the VS user community. We did a new implementation of the first implementation of VS user console in Rust in, for that community that was accepted successfully. Some requests came after about um, uh, updating uh, some external threads which we provide an update. We actually were able to eliminate any usage of external threads and uh, any uh, received notifications to be handled by the already ePoll handler that uh, the devices are using. Then we provide, the, we populate the unit test and um, in order to this device to be able to be transferred to the main workspace. Right now it's under staging. Adapter. A few changes that I think, from my opinion, is the most interesting. It's uh, for on the adapter part. The updates uh, they were about the um, redesign a bit, uh, the whole repo, the uh, code structure, and move all of the functions to common functions that they are used from all the devices, who, uh, leading to the adapter to become a device agnostic architecture, and. Actually, that makes debugging uh, much more easier, understanding the code, and populated with, um, with more devices, something trivial. <clears throat> now, a few words about the demo that you are going to see outside. So, the figure here presents, as we talked before, a Virtaio device, a Virtaio CAN device, and, and a Virtaio sound device that works at the same time. Uh, using one Virtaio Lubac transport and one Virtaio Lubac adapter. This, both of them, they are talking to different VOS user devices here and here. And uh, you can see messages that are coming and they're changing the speed, the RPMs and things like this in the IVI of, uh, and at the same time play with the media player and change songs, um, uh, change the volume uh, and things like this. Now. This demo runs on a Raspberry Pi. It uh, uses the HDL IVI as I talked, and uh, the main application that we are going to see in the next slide are going to be the simple CAN simulator, which sends the messages uh, through different messages to change the RPM and the speed. And later on that we will see uh, the media player. Now, a few words about CAN to understand a bit more, a bit more in detail. It's uh, as soon as we load the architecture, and, uh, there is an existing CAN0 device which controls the RPM, the speed, and the kilometer, no, the speed and the fuel, things like this. So on top of that, we source this device to the VOS user CAN user space uh, CAN driver. That leads to the adapter, Virtaio loopback, and creates a new Virtaio instance, uh, a CAN1 CAN instance, which this we use for routing the messages of the application. So last point before jumping to the video is um, on the sound side, the story is the same. We use VS user sound, which is being sourced by pipe wire and the default sound card using the speakers. And through the Virtaio loopback driver and adapter, a new 
uh, a new sound device created, which we can communicate via Pipewire Alsa uh, and uh, use it for the AGL AVI media player. Now we will see the demo that presents all what we said in a more detail with snippet, snippets of uh, the screen while booting it later on when we play sound and we exchange scan messages. A few things now about the initialization. We present that we run AGL we, and some uh, basic information. At that uh, moment, I see what are the commands that are, they are going to initialize the architecture for running both can and sound. Here we see that uh, there's no sound device before starting the before loading the application just to prove that things are working. After that, we can see the new CAN one device, and now the latest line says about the new Virtaio sound device that was created. Now we will see that the CAN messages that are coming to interface CAN one and CAN zero are basically the same, and there are two connected interfaces. And that running the simple CAN simulator to the CAN1 actually shores everything to CAN0 and changes the values to the IVI. Now we will see what's going on in the media player uh, side, which is using the Virtaio loopback, uh, Virtaio sound driver. Nothing fancy here, we just see that we can change the songs, we can increase, decrease the music. Nothing interesting from now on, so let me go to the other slide, just to wrap up the multi-device demo. So overall, we see uh, that we were able to run two uh, multiple devices, which can and Virtaio, Virtaio can and Virtaio sound, on top of Virtaio Lubac architecture. Now, uh, seems like the architecture is enough, it's mature enough to be connected to the AGL AVI. And existing application that they were, run, they were running natively before, uh, without, without being on top of Virtaio Lubac, now they can use Virtaio drivers via Virtaio Lubac to run in a native environment and be connected with user space driver uh, such as uh, VOS user devices. Now I will handle the mic to Michele to speak about the next steps. Yes, just a few words about the, the next steps. This is, of course, an, an ongoing activity. Uh, so we mentioned about the, the tasks that are uh, uh, the, the future activity. Uh, one is the prioritization. Uh, the other one is the RFC activity. So. Uh, the, the idea is uh, simply to keep going uh, with them. Uh, so as we said, the last, uh, last step is to, sorry, next step is to uh, communicate uh, uh, with the SDVG the plan that we put in place for the uh, prioritization. So this is uh, something that will involve the community and we expect uh, uh, discussions uh, uh, there to see what's the best uh, uh, architecture that we want to put in place. Uh, after that, of course, we'll start the, the implementation uh, and then the update on the Octo uh, uh, distribution on the Meta uh, AGL Devil uh, layer where we are working on now. Uh, so uh, this is uh, something that is planned to uh, be done in 2024, means that uh, we expect uh, uh, at the end of the year to have uh, uh, finalized everything. So you will hear uh, uh, more about this very soon uh, and very likely into the next AGL uh, event. So this is uh, all on, uh, on our side. Thanks for your attention. Uh, please come visit us uh, on the AGL booth uh, in a way that you can see it uh, running live. And uh, thank you again for, uh, for attending. Any, any question? Uh, for multiple device support, the, you will in, add the priority scheme. Uh, but uh, add, add, but when you add more and more devices, the it the but, but I look back looks like a kind of a shared bus looks like. 
So the, when I think about the real-time devices, some more QoS assurance uh, might be required because the, it will finally communicate with the hardware. So the, like the sound system and also some kind of graphics, uh, they, uh, they have a real-time constraint. So the graphics is 60 hertz and the sound is it's, uh, usually the, when I think about the real SOC, the bus, hardware bus have the priority scheme and also the real time streaming uh, assurance scheme to assure the bandwidth allocation for the real time uh, streams. So I uh, recommend to add not only the priority scheme to, to add the assuring, assuring about the bandwidth of the hardware access. Thank you. Yes, makes sense. Uh, this is a good point. Of course, resources are what they are. We cannot really multiplex them. So at a certain point, there will be a limit. Uh, it will be interesting to measure when we reach the limit uh, and uh, we of course accept the suggestion to look at bandwidth uh, uh, from the from the design phase which is important so uh, this is something we we are going to to take into account thanks thank you any other question No, thank you then, guys, and uh, talk, see you at the AGL booth then. Thank you.